This is Seven National News and in our top story. The UAE Vice President, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum has issued Cabinet Resolution No. 38 of 2014 on the Statute of Federal Law on Anti-Money Laundering and Combating the Financing of Terrorism. Prescribed in 25 articles, the resolution states that the central bank may freeze for a period not exceeding seven working days any accounts or monies of illicit source and or obtained or generated by criminal activity or related to financing of terrorist activities or organizations. In such case, the central bank must immediately inform the public attorney. The resolution also stated that Customs Authority must implement the money declaration regime issued by the UAE Central Bank on any cross-border movement of physical currency payable to bearer financial instruments, precious metals or valuable stones. Following directors from the UAE Vice President, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the Crown Prince of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, has approved the Dubai Strategy for Innovation. The strategy includes 20 initiatives that will be commenced over three years, which aim to make Dubai the most innovative city in the world. In the presence of the Chairman of His Highness, the Ruler's Executive Office, His Excellency Mohammed Abdullah Al Gargawi, and the Director General of the Executive Office, Abdullah Al Basti, the Executive Office's team, briefed His Highness Sheikh Hamdan on the details, objectives, and initi initiatives of the strategy and the implementation timeframe. The Dubai Strategy for Innovation is built in coordination with the National Strategy for Innovation and aims to make Dubai the most innovative and creative city in the world through introducing 10 major pillars, supported by a number of initiatives that will expand cooperation between the public and private sectors, education sector, entrepreneurship and global networks, in addition to Dubai's citizens, residents and visitors. An illegal drug shipment worth 170 million dirhams was intercepted recently. The Commander-in-Chief of the Dubai Police, Major General Khamis Matar Al-Mazina, made the announcement at a press conference on Monday. The Dubai Police foiled an attempt to smuggle in 17.7 million, million pills of the illegal captagon drugs into the country. In addition, three suspects involved had been arrested while the fourth remains at large. The Dubai Police's anti-narcotics department collaborated with the Ajman Police in the Operation Scorpion Sting. According to the authorities, the suspects tried to smuggle the pills by concealing them in two containers carrying wood compressing machines. Dubai Police Commander General Major General Khamis Matar Al Mazina state said they received a tip-off about the shipment. Following this, they organized police teams that followed the containers while being transferred from Jabal Ali port to a warehouse in Ajman. He also commended the efforts of the authorities in Saudi Arabia, where one of the suspects was caught when he entered the kingdom. The Dar al Bar Society, as part of its charitable and humanitarian programs targeting the most underprivileged people locally and abroad, has supported thousands of low-income patients with over 55 million dirhams over the last 10 years, according to its official report. The report shows that the 35-year-old charity association has provided a variety of medical and health services to over 6,700 patients at public and private hospitals, medical centers and clinics in a decade, including those suffering from an array of diseases spanning the hardening of arteries, arteriosis, chlorosis and hepatitis viruses, while others had eye lenses transplanted, corneas replaced and eye cataracts removed, as well as cardiac cath catheterization surgeries. Patients with hearing and speech disorders, along with emergency cases that needed urgent treatment and operations abroad, such as bone marrow, kidney and liver transplants, were helped as well in co collaboration with UAE embassies overseas. Additionally, the society has not only provided several hospitals with all the medical equipment and health supplies needed for the benefit of financially incapable patients, but it also bought them the necessary medicines, drugs and pharmaceutical products such as blood pressure, diabetes and heart medications. Commenting on the statistics revealed, Khalfan Khalifa al mazroui the chairman of Dar al-Bar Society, paid a tribute to the many philanthropists in the UAE that support the society, stating that the kind gestures reflect the graciousness and the generosity of the people of the UAE. And in other news, in an effort to showcase their passion and admiration for the culture, primary school students in Abu Dhabi's Glenelg School have set up an exhibition in the school depicting the Emirati heritage. 
Fully created and decorated by the students themselves, the exhibition, which is being held under the theme Kadimak Nadimak, translated as Your History is Your Perpetuator, takes the visitors on a trip down memory lane. It features a total of eight different pavilions showcasing the desert environment, nomadic life, pearl diving era, as well as the fashion and accessories from the past. Reminding the young, young students about the playground games their grandparents used to play, the students did not fall short of showing their enthusiasm for traditional games such as Atayla and Karabi. Students also exhibited the different household items that were used during the past as well as the traditional school, where students were taught to recite and memorize the Holy Quran. Glen Elk School, which is an affiliate school of Abu Dhabi National Oil Company, was recognized for setting up the best heritage expo in Abu Dhabi as part of the competition's first stage. The second stage of the competitions will move on to the federal level and the students will be hoping to be recognized as the best in the country. According to the principal of the school's elementary section, the exhibition reconnects the students with the lives their ancestors had lived. Our students are mostly Emirati, so for us it's about celebrating where they came from, who they are, and uh, really looking at the rich heritage that they, that they can bring to us. For us, the culture is, is like the roots of a tree. For us, a student has to know and make those roots very strong in order for the tree to grow. So this is part of this. They know who they are. Um, it's, it's heavily embedded to everything that we do so that the tree or the student will flourish. I learned uh, my grandpa how they feel and how they take medicine and how they study Quran. And uh, I see the shops, everything in the past. I, lo I learn from it what happened in the past. Uh, here is the traditional games. They, uh, when they are playing karabi, if you, um, they are pushing each other. Who win, who fo he, if somebody, if his uh, foot f fell down, uh, the another boy win. Uh, and uh, until uh, if he, he takes the much uh, marbles, he won. The school was fast, like it's, there was like, it's all like old sand, place old sand, and like on the inside, they don't sit in desk and t chair, they sit only in the map, like that. I learned like la past when they teach, they used to shout too much by the stick, like they bit too much, like they say for them read Quran, but in here we read like little, not too much. We did about uh, the beach, and uh, uh, we are happy to know about our uh, grandfathers, uh, that they learn our dad. They called uh, Hoyamal, and uh, they do it when they uh, when they take fish from the sea. And finally, in the bulletin, the highly anticipated Emirates Airline Festival of Literature will be back for its seventh year in March and will bring more than 120 renowned authors and celebrities for the five-day literary extravaganza. At a press conference, organizers announced that the seventh edition of the festival will be held from the 3rd to the 7th of March 2015 and will once again be held at the Intercontinental Hotel in Dubai Festival City. According to the organizers, the theme of the festival this year will be Wonderland as it celebrates the creativity and innovation of the writers who take their readers to a literary wonderland. The festival is expected to cater for every requirements and interests as a number of best-selling authors will be attending the festival to interact with their readers. The 2015 lineup includes Nigerian author Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, Mahsin Hamid, who won critical acclaim for How to Get Filthy Rich in Rising Asia, genre-defying Jasper Ford, David Mitchell, author of War Horse, and Scott Anderson, the author of Lawrence of Arabia, to name a few. Tickets go on sale from the 15th of January 2015 and organisers are expecting a bigger turnout than the 2014 event, which attracted more than 30,000 visitors. Organisers added that the masterclasses, workshops, interactive sessions and competitions are an integral part of the festival to cater for all interests. With the theme being Wonderland, um, we're going to town. And what I would say is that we actually live in a physical Wonderland. If you look at Dubai, it is Wonderland. We have the tallest building in the world. Um, the, the recently made islands can be viewed from space. Everything about this city is Wonderland. It's a place where dreams happen in the blinking of an eye. 
That's the physical. If we look at literary wonderland, wonderland is a place that a book can take you. You open that book, you can go anywhere. You can go up in space, you can go back in time, across continents, down rabbit holes, through wardrobes. You name it, you can find it. So we're trying to embrace the theme Wonderland with all of the things we're doing. We have got so many writers in every genre. We've got crime writers, so we've got Stuart McBride, Peter Robinson, Sophie Hanna uh, from Crime. If we look at historians, I'm so delighted that we have got Scott Anderson. He's coming from the US. He has been painstakingly researching the life of T. Lawrence and has written a new book, Lawrence in Arabia, particularly of relevance to this part of the world.